It's not a case that we pretend that everything is rosy all the time. It's not that. It's not that at all. It's that before you speak, you think of what you're going to say and how you're going to say it and then speak. So if Nisala has done something which I'm not happy with, let me think what is the best way to tell him this. I'm not saying you don't tell Nisala, look, I, I'm not happy with your work. You can do that. But there are different ways we can do that, isn't it? You can say, Nisala, this is awful man. You don't deserve to be in this organization. Leave. Please go. Now that type of feedback, do you think it will motivate him? Do you think it will motivate him to do better? Anyone thinks? Nisala will be, yeah. No. So that's the wrong type of approach. But is a Nisala, I'm a little uh, upset Nisala with what happened just now. I wanted to just take a step back and think about why did this happen? What made it go wrong? What made you do this? And just come and think about it. And I would really like if you can come and give me some response in about half an hour. Now, would that be better? Would that be better? Did I tell him I'm happy with him? No. Is there more chance now that he's going to go and think about it and fix it? So now that's what I'm trying to say. So sometimes the way we put it across is what is wrong. The words that we use is what is wrong. Yeah. So something my wife has been telling me for years. It's not what you say, Sanjeev. Most of the time you're saying the right thing. But how you say it, nobody wants to do what you're saying. Yeah. I'm still trying to improve that, by the way. <laughs> so I'm, although I'm trying to teach you about leadership, I never said I'm a perfect leader. Yes. It's a journey. We learn as we go along. And as long as we continue to learn, that's all good. As long as we continue to learn and we are humble enough to know, yes, there is more to learn. Yes, I'm not perfect. I, there's a lot more things I have to do. Good. That's all good. That's the genuineness. Yeah. How many of you heard of this thing called, I had a gut feeling? We all have. Next time you have a gut feeling, believe your gut. When I first learned this, it was so interesting for me, right? Did you know that your gut has intelligence. Did you know that your heart has intelligence? When I say intelligence, there are neurons or neuron-like cells in your heart. Well, the heart is supposed to have like 10,000 neurons, right? And there are also neurons or neuron-like cells in your gut. Gut is stomach. Did you know that? I thought that's really interesting. This was discovered somewhere in the early 2000s. So it's not, you know, uh, hot, hot, hot. But it's also not like very old news either, right? Lots of people don't know this. So that's why they say go with your gut because your gut is giving you unfiltered information. Unfiltered. Unfiltered in the sense it's not going through perception and all of that. So it's like this. Sometimes you see someone and instinctually you know I shouldn't trust that person. Have you all experienced something? Something, say, something tells me don't trust him. That's your gut feeling. You know why? There's something you have observed about this person subconsciously. It is somewhere in your mind. And now your gut is tapping into this and giving you that strange feeling saying, don't do it. Now, if you try to think why, you don't know why. Because you can't remember why. Now, they say, scientists say, that every single thing that we have experienced in our life is recorded in your mind. Every single thing. Not only this life, but previous lives also. Okay, right? But why don't we remember these things? Because it's in the far east. That's why they say if you actually get into a very meditative state, yeah, it's called transcendental meditation, you actually can tap into this. Very interesting. I have not got there yet, so don't ask me about <laughs> experience. But this is what I've heard, right? And it's marvelous. So gut feel. So heart. Heart also has intelligence. See some interesting stories, right? Where people have had a heart transplant. Let's say I die, my heart is passed on to, let's say, Chanel. Suddenly Chanel is able to say, Somebody killed me. Somebody killed me. I know who it is. I know who it is. I, it was Adrian, right? Because actually Adrian murdered me. But now that heart intelligence is giving that message to Shena, who knows nothing about this. They're documented, they're documented stories, right? Heart intelligence, gut intelligence. So something tells you, go with this, go with that, and then try to rationally think of any reason why you shouldn't go with that. Do it that way. So something says, do this, buy this, buy this building. So gut is saying bite. All right. Very good. Now you try to rationalize and see, is there any rational reason? I shouldn't. Not is there any rational reason why I should, but the other way. <laughs> yeah. And I think that might help. I have always trying to learn. So I carry a Kindle with me wherever I go. So if I come to meet one of you all at a, for a meeting and there's like 10 minutes I have to sit at a reception, you'll, you'll find me reading. Yeah. And this is something that Bradley Emerson actually taught me. You know Bradley? Bradley. So Bradley came, learned speed reading. 
and then he gave us this testimony saying people you know if they if you are running for a meeting and you don't have time to eat you still grab a sandwich and take two three bites before you get to the meeting right why can't we do the same thing in reading he said we don't have time but 30 minutes is better than say i need one hour you don't have one hour 30 minutes better than one hour you don't have 30 minutes 15 minutes better than 30 minutes you don't have 15 minutes five minutes better than nothing <laughs> five minutes five minutes five minutes also ends up right little chunks little chunks little chunks lots of times we fail because we try to do too much too fast and then we can't right but if it's small chunks it's manageable right manageable so however interested you are in learning and let's say however good i am at teaching you if i don't give you a break after one and a half hours it won't work that's why i have my team now to remind me about the time because lots of times i get carried away and i am just going on and on and on and on <laughs> no sense of time so i have some people to help you sanjay stop 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 right they need a break now so going with your gut is where something is telling you it's the right thing that's not a pressure decision no. something is telling you it's the right thing for example all of us who got married at some time you fell in love right you weren't trying to rationalize why you love the person right how many of you took a piece of paper and wrote down 20 reasons why you should marry this person anyone no so that would have been a, a gut gut feeling right you go with your passion right we can't rationalize that no yeah if you rationalize you probably wouldn't have got married if you really look at it right but the other side of it do not take a decision under pressure push back as leaders you need to push back your leaders Otherwise, what's the point? What's the point of a konda pananathi leader? <laughs> what's the point of a leader who cannot be strong? Correct? Even if it means you get into trouble with your boss. See, it's like this, no? Ultimately, whom do we have to live with every day of our lives? Whether you like it or not, who? Yourself. You can never run away from yourself. I can never run away from myself. We can run away from the boss. <laughs> yeah. So, if you do not believe in the decision, keep pushing back. Until he, somebody can convince you, no, it's the right decision, then go with it. Because if you don't believe, how can you motivate your team to believe? Think about it. Does that make sense? If you don't, you're not fully invested, how can you go and now tell your team, come with me, let's even go die together type of thing. Now, by the way, generals do this. Generals of armies for millennia have been saying, come with me, right? We will somehow do this. Or if we don't, we will die. But I'm ready to die with you. And actually they die. <laughs> and followers, they follow them, right? Yeah. Why is that? The general totally believes in what they're doing. And that belief is now inspiring everyone else to do the same thing. Yeah. But again, you look at it. Leadership is not a science. No. Management, people try to say it's a science. It's really, again, not. Right? It's a semi-science, maybe. Yeah. How many decisions do you take with perfect information? How many decisions do we take with complete information? It's almost none, isn't it? You have some information, incomplete. Rest of it is not there. Or it's too expensive to get, or it will take too long to get. So you go with incomplete information and still make a decision. Yes, some of them are right, some of them are wrong. So it's a best case response, isn't it? Given the situation, with the information I have, this is what I'm going to decide to do. I don't think there's anything wrong in that. So yes, you're right. Whether it's your money or whether it's somebody else's money, still good to maybe have that rationalization as the backup. Right? This is what my gut tells me. Is there anything rational I can see which is telling me don't do that? So then you say, I looked at the financials. Financials seemed good. I looked at this. That seemed good. Right? So there was nothing I could see negative which said don't do this. Yeah. You go and talk to CEOs of companies, how many decisions they would take purely on gut, right? <laughs> go for it. And passion will take you there, right? So it's a fine line, right? I'm not saying don't analyze. I'm not saying don't get data. I'm not saying that at all. But also don't get into analysis paralysis, which is you're paralyzed by analyzing. You analyze, 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 and you're never sure whether the analysis is enough. It's never complete. It's like if you ever wait till you're 100% ready to do an exam, you'll never do an exam because we are never 100% ready. <laughs> Could you be? Because you study one more day, you think, ah, but I have to study out tomorrow, right? I should maybe revise that one more time, right? So still not, you're not ready. <laughs> yeah, life goes on. So another thing arising from all of this, I think as leaders, don't be too hard on yourselves. Sometimes as leaders, we are very hard on ourselves. I screwed this up. Yeah. No, you're human. I'm human. As long as we learn from it, pick ourselves up, move forward. And what can anyone expect, really? <laughs> as long as we are learning, growing, and every day we are a little bit better than the previous day, isn't that all we can really do? And isn't it the same for your teams also? If your team is a little bit better today than they were yesterday, isn't that good? Isn't that what we want? So we're moving forward. 
long as we are not going backwards. Yeah, of course, with the pace of everything happening, we need to move forward faster because then even though you are doing things, we are actually realistically going backwards, right? If that makes sense. Yeah. So I would think it would matter whether the difference of opinion here, I'm not seeing it too much as a different value, but the difference of opinion as to what is right and what is, see, if I'm the guy, you're saying, Sanjeev, you know, we start at 8.30, you should be there at 8.30. I said, Duruk, does it matter if I come at 8.45 or 9? Because I'm getting my work done, I'm getting more work done than Mahamad. <laughs> yeah. So then I would think, because in this modern day and age, I think we need to be flexible. If you take an example like this, we have to be even more mindful that people are thinking differently. Yeah. So maybe you'll say, Sanjeev, by you coming at 8.45, you know, we need to start our meeting at 8.30. Give me a reason why I should come in. Then say, okay, but you can't we come start at 8.40. No, Sanjay, because people like Ahmed, they have to go to the field at 9. So we need to start at 8.30. And we can't do that. We can't have a great meeting without you because you add a lot of value. So do you think you can come in at 8.30? No, you're giving me a reason to come other than just saying, just come because I'm asking you to come. Has a difference? Yeah. So lots of people today would ask for reasons. Why are you asking me? They might actually overtly ask, say, say it with their mouth and say, give me a reason. Or they might not say that, but they're thinking, give me a reason. <laughs> yeah. But if it's a difference of value where you are honest and I'm dishonest, now we can't get on. <laughs> then you need to say, Sanjeev, our company is built on a value of honesty. I can see from your behavior here and here and here that you don't have this. I don't think that's a fit. Please leave. <laughs> because actually, you cannot change someone's value system. So that's why I said this is more behavior than a value. Because if it is a value, I don't think we can change it. You need to then hire the people with the same values. It's a, like a painful exercise, right? Trying to change someone's uh, value system. Are you all understanding the values? Because that's the bedrock of who we are. No? Our beliefs and values are the bedrock of who we are. We don't even know what our beliefs and values are. But that drives us in everything we do. Yeah. And I think something like that would be told right at the outset, right? When they're being recruited itself, you say, you know, you have to, you have to come in at 8.30. Yeah. Can you do that? Or actually, see, this, when we talk of the, the Gen Z's and all that, see, something I have read and which I have come to believe also is, before they do what you are asking them to do, they want to know, and I have a Gen Z's here looking at me now, they want to know, do you really care about them? If you are purely playing a transactional role here and saying, I'm your boss, do this, then they also say, ah, okay, then I also don't really care about you. And by extension, the company. Yeah. So if you have Gen Z's close to you, ask them this question. I guess Gen Z's there also, right? Okay. If you show them you really care about them, and not only show them, but actually you really care about them as human beings, and you're invested in their career, in their future, you'll find that they will respond. 